Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovic, and this video is by request from you guys because so many people have been asking me about it, emailing me about it, wondering. We're going to talk today. Well, behind me here, I have my Ram 20, my 2019 Ram 2500 uh, Bighorn uh, Cummings Diesel with 6.7. And uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit. I'm going to tell you what I like, what I've changed, uh, how it's done for me now. We've had it for about two months here and uh, put about 30, I think we're about 32, 3,500 miles on it. It's been in the woods about eight or 10 times already. It's been, it's been used quite a bit here. And I'll tell you what I think about it, what I don't like, some of the things we've changed and that sort of stuff, some of the things I've put on there. So I'm going to break it down for you again. This one here not something i would normally do on this channel but it is by request from you guys here asking me all the information about it so i'm gonna go ahead and do it for you so here we go so we have right here this is the 2019 ram 2500 cummings diesel this is a uh um the um extended cab or what do they call them? not the mega cab the uh crew cab uh and uh, this is so it's crew cab size big horn trim level and uh it has a 6.7 diesel in there um this is not the ho one it comes in the 3500 so this one's putting out basically 395 horsepower i think it's 395 horsepower and 980 feet or foot pounds of torque or maybe it's, it's right around 400 horse and uh 850 or 890 uh foot pounds of torque so the thing's a beast it does incredible getting very good gas mileage with it averaging right now even with the bigger tires averaging about 19 uh and i'm still in the low spot so it hasn't kicked over they say it's usually about five or six thousand miles when the thing kicks over and you really start improving on gas mileage so we're not there yet but what I've done to it here, uh, I did immediately, right when we got it, I changed to the Falcon Wild Peak AT3 tires on there, okay? These are uh, uh, basically, they're they're just, the, they're the biggest ones I can fit on here without having to go to custom offset wheels or anything like that and not have any rubbing. And uh, I don't street baby this truck, okay? This thing spends a lot of time in the woods and the last thing I'm going to do is have to deal with rubbing at full lock and stuff. So these tires that are on there, they are a... Uh, uh, what size are they? They are uh, 295 60 R20s that are on here. Basically, on the specs there, they come in at 35 point, or I mean, I'm sorry, 34.77 inches tall, and uh, they're 11 point, uh, 11 point 8 wide, basically. So it's almost a 35 by 12 tire, basically, is what it's coming in at. Um, put them on all of there, and uh, what I did is I took the original ones off the second I got it, and so I can sell those tires. And uh, when I sell those tires, and then for the um, actually I did already sell those tires. I got 600 bucks for them. So this price of those tires, uh, plus the deal I got on these tires ended up costing me about 400 or about 300 and 30 bucks to upgrade these tires and i wanted them good 10 ply tires uh, i like them i've had them on a lot of trucks they've been very good for me and i can get 80,000 miles out of those tires before i got to change them which is a, a gold mine thing so i really like the falcon tires been really happy i have never ever had actually yeah no i don't think i've ever had a flat with a falcon tire and i've owned them on five trucks now and i'm in the woods all the time where uh like my my last f-150 not the one i just had but the one before that i had uh, i put three flat tires in the, in the stock good your tires that were on there in the woods uh before i was able to change them out because i was trying to wear down the stocker so like i said incredible tires these uh uh falcon wild peak ats uh just a great tire so i did those on there also um i wanted wheel to wheel running boards okay so i wanted them to go from here all the way to that wheel was the plan that's what i was looking for unfortunately with this body style being so new uh none of the places that i would get the running boards from made them okay they didn't have them offered yet in a full wheel to wheel so we'll come around on this other side i think that side's getting a little bit of glare here um so I couldn't run the wheel to wheels on there yet. So I bought these as temporary. Now these ones here are by Ionic and they are a great running board. That thing is super solid, doesn't flex one bit. Very impressive and they're also very affordable at like a little over 200 bucks. The downside is this model here, um, This is their, they have a better one. They have the one that looks exactly the same and it does go wheel to wheel and it's actually E-coated and then powder coated on top of that, which means it's gonna hold up a lot better. That's the one I want to go with, and it's only 100 bucks more, but I uh, they don't have it available yet for another couple months. Once that is available, I will buy those and put those on, so I put these on as a temporary kind of deal. Actually, I'll probably run these through winter, and then next spring put those other ones on there. Um, but the e-coating is fantastic. That's another beautiful thing about this truck and what I love about it. Ram, uh, since in 2000, I want to say it was 2013 was when they started, but all of these body panels on here, this whole thing, underneath the paint, they're all e 
e-coated body panels. Now, if you're not familiar with the e-coating process, you can look it up, but it's pretty insane. Super hard and durable, and it prevents rust and anything like that. So these panels are all e-coated underneath, which is a phenomenal thing to have on there. Um, and that uh, the running boards that I want to get will also be e-coated, then powder coated for double protection. And uh, if I don't like that results, or if you wanted these, my recommendation for something like this, if you're in the woods as much as I am, you can see it. I live on a dirt road. They're always getting hit with rocks and stuff like that too. And uh, if it were me um, and I was going to keep those, before I put them on, I would actually take them in somewhere or do it myself and I would powder coat the underside of that. So I would actually run that powder coating underneath the here and cut it like right about here halfway up or something and powder coat that and powder coat all those brackets that are not powder coat i'm sorry um rhino line that's what i meant sorry apologize but i would rhino line um the whole underside of that to protect it from from rocks and from that kind of stuff and keep it in better make them last longer um there are factory ones as well too but the factory ones for this i didn't like the looks of any of them not I, there's not one out there in the factory yet that i cared for so i didn't want to go that route so that's what i put on there now some other things that we did here too uh i did put uh, I put headlight revolution LEDs in this thing. Okay, the big horn does not come with LED lights already. Uh, and if you want to put them on there, it's like a $1,200 upgrade. Well, I put headlight revolution LED high beams, and uh, those are also headlight revolution. I don't know if you can see them behind the, the puck there, but they're headlight revolution uh, low beams. So I got LED high beam and low beams in that car uh, in the front of that right there, which is really nice. I love them. Man, they're incredible. I mean, they're the, one of the most valuable things I did to this. They're absolutely insane uh the amount of light output from this is just incredible i've never seen anything like it and i've had leds on uh, all my other trucks that's the reason as soon as i got this i was like no this isn't gonna fly and i put those uh, headlight revolution leds in there works absolutely amazing i love them one complaint that i have about this truck that i absolutely hate is this mirror right here this is the passenger mirror okay uh, i'll show you from the other side but the the problem is that this mirror this one the big one is actually magnified i don't know why but it's pointless and stupid that they do not understand when you have these in the up position which the mirrors slip right up for your towing mirrors. I can understand it being there that way, like that in that up position. I, I get that, it makes sense. But I cannot be like a lot of these people who their diesel trucks have never ever seen the woods. They got them lifted to the hilt and they're big and they look amazing and they never go off road whatsoever. I have to go through the woods with mine. Mine, mine lives in the woods. And as you look at that, you can see that when you have them up, they stick out a couple inches further. That's too far for me to get through the woods like that and have to deal with that. So, and then with them, with branches wrapping around it and snagging, it's not streamlined and I'm going to get into trouble. So I cannot have these up except for when I'm towing, well, they're great for when I'm towing my trailers, towing my camper, towing my boat, towing everything. I love those mirrors in that position. But when you have them in the down position here, which they just fold right over, but when you have them in a down position, this mirror is pointless and this mirror is pointless because they're designed to be this way where you get magnification and then you have your convex mirror down here that shows you everything which is fantastic but in a down position like this they serve zero purpose and they suck completely this mirror is absolutely worthless so i did put this little six dollar blind spot mirror on here it is adjustable you can wiggle it move it adjust it it's all set up uh, and we love it it actually is very stable it's holding steady um and i you know i'm testing it it was six dollar test but we really love it and you can see everything perfect in there uh, and like i said if i put this mirror up i can adjust wherever i want i can spin that and put it wherever i want it to be to work good I'm guessing we had it about right there probably. But uh, um, like I said, that's an excellent addition for $6. That Even my wife said too, she's like, now you can see you don't have any blind spots because this mirror sucks. They, they should have never magnified this one right here. It's pointless, just stupid thinking. Now, I didn't want to go with too big of a mirror here because these are, as you see down here in the corner, they are heated. And since they're heated, I want to still have that mirror as an option there because you can still use it. It's just not as good. So I went with a smaller blind spot mirror up there, but you can see it really good from inside. I'll show you when we get in there. So we put that on there. <clears throat> I also put LED cargo light, 1,000 watt LED cargo lights in there. They're incredible too. And I'll actually put a link for any of this stuff I can below for you. So you can see these things and then you can find the one for your vehicle. But 1,000 watt LED um, cargo lights in there, which light up the bed of this truck 
just amazing and it also spills over so when i'm actually backing up to my trailers and stuff i can also turn on that cargo light and you get so much light out here from that that it's just insane so those were a great improvement and i also put 1000 watt led backup bulbs in here as well too for backup lights which the difference was huge with the stock original ones when i would put this in reverse out here where i live where we have no lighting out here at all it's all dark when i would put that in reverse you could barely see a grainy image of what was back here with those thousand watt led bulbs in there now everything is lit up i can see all the way out into that woods and everything in my backup camera with it so they're another amazing thing and they're dirt cheap it was like 10 bucks for those bulbs and 10 bucks for those bulbs so they're not expensive and they were quick and easy to put in so that's what i did there this uh this hitch that's on here this is my guard okay this is not a hitch this is too small of a hitch too, too short of a drop to be used for anything that I have but I got it at Walmart for like eight bucks or ten bucks or whatever it was for the kit um, and I went there and picked one it was already beat up at the end of that is bent a little bit uh, so I got the discount on it yeah I'm, I'm anal like that I, I anytime I get a deal I can but this one is just a blocker this is for the people when I'm down in the city that got a ride too close to me that park in parking spots too close to me this saves my bumper this thing get on my other trucks that gets hit by cars all the time and it'll teach them you know there's no reason for you to be that close to my truck and if you are you get hit by you get bit by that uh, that trailer hitch so that one is just a guard for me to protect me i have two other hitches in here that i have to use it uh you know i got two drop hitches that are adjustable i'll show you i got what got them over there they're actually pretty sweet um i'll show you that in a minute uh bed liner wise in here I put in a rugged liner bed liner. The reason I went with rugged liner is I called the Dodge dealer and I asked him who they use uh, for the or their who makes their Mopar one. It was four hundred dollars and they said it's made by rugged liner. I called up rugged liner and I asked him how much it was for a generic one that doesn't say Mopar and they said two hundred thirty bucks shipped right to my dealer. So I bought this one instead. So the only difference is I saved almost half price and it says rugged liner instead of showing a Dodge Ram head on there. Uh, so that's the the liner I got in there. I have my uh, two two by fours, which I've done videos on why you should carry those. I did mount a shovel in there as well too. You can see right there. That's always been with me on every truck I've owned. I've had a shovel in there somewhere. Now in my F one fifties, I was able to put it be in the bed of the truck, or I mean, in, or behind the seat. But I've always had that shovel with me. Uh, one like it. This is a brand new one. They're like ten bucks. I'll put a link to it. They're very small and compact. And I bought those uh, little grippers. They hold on with one screw, and I just mounted it right there. Very easy. I'll put those in the description for you too. Um, but now I always have that shovel. If you having a shovel in the woods is one of the most important things you can have. You don't have. The this, you don't have a way of recovery very well so shovel absolutely vitally important um and i hope to not have to use that one because my other one was all rusted out that one being brand new is uh kind of nice it looks nice and clean and it's got a coating on it so hopefully i don't got to use it anytime soon but uh like i said for a, for a ten dollar shovel and a three dollar set of mounts it's right there and it's not moving it stays right there sweet and easy those rubber clamps are just amazing so that's what i did back here um the two by four stuff like i said you'll see that in another video for you uh so i think that's pretty much all that we did on the outside of this thing as far as setup and all that kind of stuff one more thing here too we did do is the cord this is a diesel so this has to be plugged in all right there's no option about it in the winter time when i get into those real low temps i'm gonna i don't have to but i'm gonna want to plug this in uh so i got my garage right here it's real easy i can run a cord right through there right under the garage door but the cord for this runs right up underneath of here and sits right up in there we well, got to fish that cord out and set it up and use it so i bought this on amazon for like i, I want to say it was like 10 bucks or something but you can see that plug it goes right on here and goes through there there's the plug right there um and now this is actually this came with the truck this is the front license plate okay in michigan we're not required to have a front license plate some states are but this is where i chose to put this at for for what i'm doing with it but basically so what we do is i have that plug mounted on this i will plug that end of it into the plug that's under here in the winter time and so just in the winter when i'm going to use this i will mount this plate right on the front just like that and it will sit there all winter long so when i come home and or at night when we want to plug it in all i have to do is just walk up to the front of the truck where that is open this cap and then plug my cord in this will sit right on here just like that there's all my bolts but uh to mount it but yeah so i'll just plug in right there sweet and simple this will only be on here in the winter time this front plate and then uh in the summertime when i don't need that i will take it back off let me stick that in there so i don't lose it and uh but it'll make that sweet system you know sweet little setup so um i didn't want to there's really not a lot of places to permanently mount it 
um, that's not going to beat up. That valance underneath there gets crushed in the woods all the time, so it wasn't an option there. I didn't feel like drilling into my bumper, so doing it right on this plate and then mounting that on there in the wintertime is going to work just perfect for exactly what I needed to do. So that was a pretty sweet, simple thing. Uh, while we're at it here, I will show you real quick the, uh, um, the two hitches that I use. Let me set that down. So coming in over here, that big hitch, this hitch right here is my equalizer four hitch. This is what I use with my camper, okay? There's my two support poles for it, uh, for that weight distribution. This hitch right here is amazing, little dude, and it was so dirt cheap. Um, but you can see you've got adjustable positioning, so this drop hitch. Uh, this is what I use for my bow fishing boat, for my trailers, my uh, hunting trailer, my cargo or uh, landscape trailer. All my trailers are running this hitch. Uh, just a flawless hitch in dirt cheap. I'll put a link for it below, but this thing is very, very well priced. Uh, 6,000 pound or whatever it is, weight rating on this thing. Uh, two inch ball. It comes with everything already there except for the ball. I think, I don't remember if I had to put the ball on or not. I might have had to put the ball on, but I will put a link there for you. But that hitch is incredible. We've used it quite a few times now pulling a bow fishing boat, and the thing's just been amazing. As far as towing with this, uh, with this truck, unbelievable unbelievable as a matter of fact even with my big camper there we have that 34 foot uh camper i'm going to venture to say that if i were towing wise between this and my f-150 that we had before this if this is a 10 on towing uh with that big camper fully loaded with water fresh water tanks filled fully loaded with gear if this pull or towing it with this is a 10 i'm going to say that f-150 was about a three and I think that F-150 did really good, but when you tow with something like this, unbelievable. I mean, you don't even know that thing's back there. It's just insane how well this thing tows. Uh, in sidewise, what we have here, what we did is we did go with the uh, Ram, the uh, Ram's all weather floor mats in here they're like a weather tech or a husky liner they're really good i love them uh and yes they do keep every what it's nice is they keep everything contained in the floor mat so you don't have to vacuum your truck out very often your carpet's not getting beat up we put them in the front we put them in the back here too in the back they go all the way across which is really nice in here uh you can see truck has lived in here we use it all the time uh, my daughter's water bottles. The Bighorn model does not have any USB ports back here. So I actually ran a cord from up front back here for my daughter for her cell phone and stuff like that. That's what that is. Uh, reason you're seeing towels under here. I keep towels in here. Uh, two of them stuffed in here and the reason for it is is I want them for when I'm hunting if I come if it's raining and I'm hunting and I come in I can drape that towel over my seats where I'm driving and not get all that mud and muck and crap all over my seats so I use that I actually have one uh, a uh, crib sheet that goes over the back of this as well too during hunting season that protects the back seat for me throwing all my gear and my wet packs and everything on uh, and protects that as well too so those are little things here uh, as far as the truck, like I said, the Bighorn does not have USBs, does have a nice little compartment here. You got tons of water bottle holders down here and things like that. It's a great setup. It does also have this, I, my daughter loves this center console with cup holders in there as well too. My F-150 did not have that. So it's a great setup. A couple of neat features. I'm going to throw this water out of here. Got tons of storage room and all the doors and everything like that. What's nice too is this has, if I lift this up and I pop this, and I'm going to fold this out of the way so we can get in there and show you here. You fold this mat up. Hang on. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Actually, I'm going to set you down for a half second while I move this mat out of the way. There we go. All right. Now with that mat moved, you can see here we have, I love this about the RAM, we have in-floor storage on both sides. And this is huge. These are super deep. I have, uh, that's my, my, uh, um, my bright eyes that I use, my saw in there, and then that's my big Vier, uh, you know, my Vier compressor. But you get a lot of room in this thing down here. I love that. And they got them on both sides, and you can even use them as coolers. Uh, so if you want to put, you know, they're plastic lined and waterproof, so you can put coolers in them. Uh, but they're awesome setup. So I, I love that. Under the seats, Got a ton of storage behind here. I have other towels, like I said, because I use them for my seats. This is a huge, I got two of these under here, these huge four inch, 30 foot toe straps. I got tons of them back there. All my recovery gear is behind there. And then underneath this, there's my tool kit right there that I have. Uh, you know, you guys see me do videos on that. It's always in here. And then this one, let me lift this, hang on here. Try and lift this side under here. 
you can see I got so much stuff stacked in behind here. There is so much room, more toe straps, tree savers, all my recovery gear uh, under here. This is just a piece that I goes in the thing for winter time. But um, there is my uh, uh, my Weiss, or Weiss Scott more power puller. Done videos on that. That thing's incredible. All the extra shackles, everything right there, nice and well contained. Now this is pretty cool here. <clears throat> since ram does not have a flat floor meaning you have this transmission hump right here kind of became a bummer for a lot of people well they fixed this and well now it's actually pretty nice for me too what they've done you take this piece right here and you open this these flat sets and you flip that like that let's just uh open up a couple of these here to show you up so you just flip these up on here like this and then this becomes a flat floor all the way across your whole bed now you can use that in there and you can still store a ton of stuff underneath of it which is really nice so you have two layers of storage i can fit all kinds of gear underneath both sides of this and have the flat floor plus i got all the storage under there so for me for hunting trips this is really a nice feature and what else is nice if i'm on my way to kansas or missouri or something like that or i'm going somewhere alabama i'm doing a hunting trip on my own if i want to stop at a rest area and sleep for a couple of hours i don't have to just tip the seat back and be uncomfortable i'm a short guy i can come in here i've already tested this but i can lay in here comfortably not completely stretched out um, but i can get in here and lay down comfortably and sleep back here for a few hours all day long just throw a pillow at that end kick back relax and oh is it nice i've actually like I said tested it so that's a really nice feature they put in this thing i'm I'm really excited about it. Uh, and like I said, it's very thought out and very well planned. I'm pretty pretty stoked about how they put this whole thing together. So that is the back seat of this dude. Like I said, a lot of options, a lot of leg room, a lot of everything. Very well thought out. All the, all the details in here are fantastic. Even a little stuff, like how they put this right here on the seatbelt. Because in my F-150, this seatbelt would sit here and on all of them. They just rattle as you go through the woods. That's all you would hear. With this, no rattle. Okay, they got that guard in there right there that wedges that in there and it keeps them dead silent. Little things like that make a huge difference. And, and I love the quality that they did in this and how they have it set up. Um, in the front, standard basic off. You know, this is the dash layout in here. Awesome setup. Very well put together. Uh, great setup. The storage compartment in this thing is insane. Not only do you have a top one right here like this. Then you hit, and that's where I ran that cord. That cord you're seeing back there is the cord I run to my back to my daughter's. It's plugged in uh, in a USB back there, and it runs right through that slot. And I have it going back to my daughter. But then I can also lift this whole thing up. Got all kinds of cool information that you need here in different charts. But then you have this huge storage area down here. It's my Glock 19 there, spare parts, my that plug-in piece. This right here for my laptop and stuff, I can plug right in that cigarette outlet right there and let it sit right here just like that and plug into there if I need to. So that's kind of a nice little tool. But you have all this storage down in here, which this thing is just massive. And then here, and then this slides. So I can slide that. If I actually put the gun down low and I can slide that right over top, Look at all this storage you have in here. Just insane amounts of storage. We added a couple USBs in here too, this USB block. Um, they give you USBs and everything right here too, but so we had them open, so I have that. And there's a hidden compartment up in here uh, that I can just slide that block right up into like that so it's not there if we don't need it. These are our cords for our cell phones for me and my wife so we can charge them. Cell phone holders right here that you can stick your cell phones into right there and set them so they just kind of rest right into here like that, sweet and easy. Uh, so it's a great setup in here, fantastic you know, a couple pen holders in there. So very impressed with what they've done here as far as, let me put this stuff here, slide this in right here. Um, so great setup in the inside. Um, they do give you nice storage boxes. Let me close that up. You get a nice glove box, which has got a ton of room in it as well too. Then they also give you this one, which is pretty sweet. Got a whole nother storage compartment right up here so like i said very thought out very well planned sunglass holders the whole deal in here you know you got it it's a nice setup um push button start got the big screen on here right there so you got the screen in there this is a magnet for my cell phone which can just rest right there that's why i have the cords let me turn the radio off um, but so I can plug the cord right in and just let my phone sit right here. So it's right there so I can use it for navigation and that stuff. They're just little, they just slip right on there. These things are awesome. You put the magnet in the back of your phone. Um, they work really good. <clears throat> so I have that there. 
Um, like I said, yeah, 3,000 miles on this dude. Like I said, just an awesome, awesome truck. The power of this thing is unreal, the torque. You just tap that throttle, and you can feel, feel that shake. Watch this, I'll do it again. Just that torque of this thing is insane. I mean, isn't I, I love that. And so, yeah, like I said, just an awesome truck. A lot of great storage holders down here, stuff everywhere. Anything you need in here, like I said, it's got it with a ton of them. Um, does have the exhaust brake on there, which is insane. I love the exhaust brake feature. I don't know why all diesel have that. I don't understand the reasoning why they can or can't, but Dodge does have it. But that exhaust brake, you got, if you look at the dash here, you got, uh, there is uh, full exhaust brake on and auto exhaust brake. Auto, I don't care for much, but the full is just insane when you're towing. That thing is just incredible. Um, and they even give you a really sweet auto warm-up feature on this. So you can see the tack right now. We're running it uh, about 7,500, uh, about you know, just under about 7,000 RPMs. If I come out here in the morning to warm this thing up and I want to heat it up quicker, I can come down here to my things right here and I can hit cruise control, set, listen to the motor. Look at the tack. Jumps it up to 1,000 RPMs. And I can also adjust it higher or lower if I want, but it'll stay there. Then I come over here and I hit the exhaust brake. I put the exhaust brake on and now that's going to heat it up in like literally a third of the time. You'll watch that temp gauge will come up pretty quick. I'm not going to wait for it, but it allows you to really heat that up on cold mornings very, very quickly and get it to operating temperature that you want. When you're done, you can either hit cancel or I can just touch a brake and it brings that tack right back down. So just an awesome setup in this truck. I straight up, like I said, I can't rave enough about it. Love it. As far as how it rides and what it does in the woods, um, Comparatively, compared to the F-150, I, I run the same trails, I run the same things back there, and the snowmobile trails that were on some of those, you end up getting into some very soft sand spots. Point being, though, anywhere my F-150 went in two-wheel drive, this goes in two-wheel drive. Anywhere with my F-150 that I had to put in four-wheel drive to get through, I also have to put this in four-wheel drive to get through as well, too. Uh, I do notice that this is a lot rougher of a ride, being three-quarter ton suspension. It is rougher to ride through the woods on the washboards the bigger bumps are great. Uh, matter of fact, on the bigger bumps where I would bottom my F-150 out going through there, it's nice. This doesn't bottom out at all. So I actually like it better for that. But when you get into the washboards and stuff like that, uh, this one kind of, you know, you, when you're talking to somebody in the car and you're going over that, it sounds like you're going, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, you know, because you're the washboards bounce you around a little bit. So, um, but other than that, like I said, so it's kind of a trade-off. On the bigger hits, like I said, you can go faster through them. It holds up well and doesn't bottom out. On the, on a little choppy stuff, like I said, it gets a little more annoying but in the woods it performs about the same as my f-150 did which was what i was concerned with because there is a lot more weight to this this thing's uh but i don't remember what it is i want to say it's about an eight thousand pound truck versus a five thousand pound truck so quite a bit heavier but uh but it holds up really well out there and does you know i have no complaints as far as it getting through anything and uh you know yeah, just straight up love it. So there you go. That kind of show. Oh, one more little thing I noticed that I did put on here, mainly for my wife because of the fact that it is a diesel and is our family vehicle. Uh, I got these on Amazon. This diesel cap, it just sticks right in there like that. Just a little, but it says diesel on there. So this way they can't make a mistake and it's magnetic and it sticks right there like that. I got it as a kit with the aluminum deft uh, cap as well too. So sweet, simple, and easy, but just one more thing to prevent them from putting... Uh, um, the wrong gas in there. So I did put th those were dirt cheap as well too. Nothing expensive there, but, uh, so we did that. And that's basically, uh, I believe everything that I've done to this truck and what we think of it so far. My only complaint of this thing is that stupid magnified passenger mirror. That is the only thing without that. I would give this truck a, I would give it a 12 out of 10. As far as everything we've seen so far, I straight up love the, love everything about it. Um, as the best truck I've ever owned. My only complaint um, like I said, is that stupid mirror right there, that thing there, whoever thought this out was, was not thinking right. Uh, and like I said, for those guys who want to drive, if you see Rams, a 2,500 heavy duty Ram going down the road and they got their mirrors tipped up like moose mirrors. Now you know why it's not because they're trying to be cool. It's because that mirror right there sucks in the down position, putting that blind spot mirror on there definitely makes an improvement and makes it better, uh, and makes it usable. So, uh, there you go. That kind of shows that's, that's the Ram right there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, I will talk to you later there will be links down below for some of the things i've done so if you want to uh see what they are and check them out for yourself that info will be in, a, in the description for you thanks for watching bye